just just very quickly, I like what he did with his file names. He's turned it so that it's uh, vertical, spells out his name instead of horizontal. Oh, is that what he did? I was trying to decipher Indeed. the uh, the ancient hieroglyphics displayed before me. <laughs> We're out of Weedabix. Got to run to the store. So uncle's off to get some, uh, some Weedabix for breakfast. And I'm just getting a heart at the start here. Of course, the standard start, so our runners will go ahead and make the jump down the ledge, walk on over to the magical floating bush, pull it up, fall down the uncle hole to see what uh, their item is going to be at the start here. Bob walks a little bit too far to the right, ends up almost getting trapped by that rock. It's okay. We had a fire rod start, so now fire rods be welcome good. for both runners. Indeed. Now a little bit of love. slight advantage getting into the castle but this, at this early in the game not going to make too much of a problem for Bob. Yeah, short of both runners taking essentially the exact same route, small little time saves like these, while they can add up, really don't matter too much in the end. Yeah, at some point we're going to see some divergence between uh, M Lim and uh, Bob, so that will potentially give one runner an opportunity to pull ahead or another runner the opportunity to to kind of bypass any sort of small lead that the other runner might have, so not uh, not too worried at this point for either runner, you know, if, if you're, you know, a second or two or a couple of frames behind or Something like that. Of course, we've got the Kakatar sprite for Bob on the left, and Emlyn going with the Twilight Princess Zelda. So we're about to see the very unique Zelda saving Zelda uh, scenario over on the right side there. I mean... Sometimes you just gotta save yourself. Or save an alternate version of yourself from another point in space and time. That seems possibly unsafe. It does. Uh, if, you, if you notice here, you'll notice that Zelda never actually bumps up against Zelda. There's always that little bit of space in between, so they, they kind of know... They know that the, uh, the world would fold in upon itself should they ever bump into each other. I just kind of assumed they would cancel each other out. Either way, not not a good time. Nope, and we're actually seeing Emlyn go around, use the the crossover bridge there. Usually we see a lot of runners, and Bob's going to do it the, the quote-unquote short way. I don't think there's really too much of a time difference between either way. A lot of it's just come down to uh, preference and comfort comfortability and kind of the positioning of the guards. If you can't make that quick little walk through the uh, the way you came, sometimes you just go up and around. As I understand it, going up and around that way is, I think, faster only if you have the boots by this point? Yeah, because it'd be a, it's a straighter line. It's a straighter line than it would be trying to dash through the tight corridor there. But unfortunately, with the uh, with this being the standard start, we're probably not going to get to see that boot difference because our runners are forced to go through and do all of this at the start. So 
you, know, you don't have the option of coming back here later and checking those chests once you've got the boots in a uh, traditional open mode. Neither runner seems to have found Ooh. a bomb drop yet. No, but uh, Emlyn just picked up the hammer in the uh, sw the first uh, chest in escape, so that's a nice find. I mean, that does mitigate the bomb issue, though getting that bomb drop also mitigates it too. Yeah, that's really nice too because that's gonna open, that's gonna give them a weapon to actually hit things with, so they'll be able to, like as you said, uh, game. They're gonna be able to go ahead and. Use that very quickly. So Emlyn's got the bomb, and Bob is not. Yeah, Bob's gonna have to come back for these three chests in the back of Escape uh, once he has the gloves. And fortunately for Bob, nothing progression-wise back there. Just a heart and some rupees, twenty-five in total. So. Not gonna miss out too much on not getting those chests, but still, that's gonna be something that plays in the back of his mind. Yeah, I wonder if both our runners will go ahead and skip this last chest here. Nope, uh, it's gonna be the blue mail, so that's good. Well, it was nice to uh, have that extra defense early on. And... Let's see where our runners go next. Bob's going to do a check. And we have a red crystal at Eastern Palace, a blue crystal at Tower of Hera. I think I saw there was another blue crystal down at Desert Palace. So we may have three crystals here in the overworld. Definitely two. Desert seems to be green pendant. Green pendant, okay. I'm not colorblind, I'm just dumb. <laughs> Thank you guys for uh, for confirming that. I was in the middle of checking uh, Tower of Hera when Bob went back from the map screen, so I was kind of like, I thought I saw a crystal, but I'm not sure. Just a 50 on the lumberjack ledge there, so... To start with, we know that it's, it's not agger required for a specific uh, progression item. Still could be agger required depending on what else we find here in the uh, overworld. And indeed, as the uh, as the chat is mentioning, that last chest in Sanctuary, if you count your items carefully, I apparently missed the map, so I thought it might have still been a, uh, a map pull. The map is map is one of the uh, seven items that you can get from a chest within the, uh, the escape slash Hyrule Castle area. So if you get six items and don't get the map, that seventh one, that chest in Sanctuary, has to be the map, and sometimes you can skip it. But I, j I simply just missed the map, unfortunately. We're gonna get a bottle vendor check, and vendor's got bombs. It's actually a, it's a expensive, uh, expensive check there, but it's nice. They're gonna get some bombs there, help them out a little bit. I mean, it's either 50 or 100 for bombs. Granted, you only get three this time. Yeah, Bottle Vendor's got a little bit more of a, uh, a price hike. Maybe there's some premium bombs. and <laughs> You get some free ones from that chest. There's the powder. Bob's going to be super happy when he gets down into uh, that basement there. He's going to be ecstatic. He loves powder. I mean, mystery sprinkles are pretty good. Indeed. And of course, Bob has also got the bow, which was hiding out in the back of Tavern. So, Emlyn will pick that up, probably in a reverse route here. There's the boots! Oh my goodness, boots and cuckoo hut there. Always a good time when we got ourselves <laughs> a fast seed. 
Oh my goodness, and there's the lift upgrade in the well. <laughs> what the heck? There's a heart. Oh my. Our runners are getting a lot of progression all at once here. There's a big 50. There's the red mail, okay. This is a stacked Kakariko. And Emlyn now couldn't be going around to... There's the other lift upgrade too, so... Wow. Yeah, this sure is uh, starting out interesting. I don't think I've seen a, uh, a Kakariko that's been that loaded in quite some time. And Bob's going to be very happy in a moment here when he finds that powder in the basement. And Emlyn will be very happy to find that bow... Hanging out in this back chest here. Boom. Yeah, I don't believe I've ever seen Titan's Mitt in Kakariko. Uh... I don't think I've seen it either, but it's certainly... Certainly within the possibility that it could be there. Well, I mean, of Actually, course. we're going to get a check here. And Emelyn's going to go over and check the uh, Powder Bat. I mean, it's available. Might as well do it now while you're here. Yeah, so one of the things to keep in mind here with B29 and uh, Red Armor is pointing it out as well. You get a lot of seeds where you get a lot of progression early and then the game just chokes you out through mid-game and sends you on all the kinds of funky little quests and you never end up finding half the stuff you need until it's way, way late. And this seed is being way too generous right now. I don't trust it. It always seems to start out this way. Indeed. And bat with just a little bit of love. So if there's something up here on the library shelf, this will be good for Emlyn and Bob. Ah, uh, just a 10 bomb upgrade. They can pass that up. Not really used to seeing a, this early of a King's Tomb check, but I suppose that makes sense. I would say, you know, it's it's a location you can check right now. Go check it. Well, certainly. Get these out of the way. Get these these little tiny squares out of the way, and then you can kind of focus on dungeon diving later. Yeah, just some bombs. Both owners going to sync up here at Bonk Rocks, so we'll get to see in stereo what's in here. It's the lamp. Ooh. No more dark rooms. Finally, we can mm -hmm. see. So, yeah, we've got access now to East South Mountain, and more importantly, we've got full logical access, at least, to Eastern Palace. So, I would not be surprised at all if we see our runners do this. Hey, I'm going to... Oh, I'm going to go... Ah... Uh, I think they messed it up. I think they wanted Hulahan room. Which that leads me to think they're th they're thinking Zora. At some point here. I mean, it's certainly possible. He is in logic right now, so... Indeed. And Bob's gonna go ahead and... Get that disappointment. There we go. That's a nice hula hand room. And this will also spit uh, Emlyn back down in the uh, the bottom of the map, so you can immediately go and do uh, south of Kakarik, uh, south of Hyrule Check. Wait a minute! You're you're gonna skip that one that one five room, Emlyn. Go back and get it. Go back and get that one. You can't just you can't just do all of Hulahan room and leave one. That's ah! 
I, I apologize to all of our viewers who may be very upset right now. And for those wondering too, um, what is Hulahan Room? It's a secret room that was put into the game. Um, guy, a kid by the name of Chris Hulahan won the contest in Nintendo Power. And the prize was you got to be in the game. And so that room was the uh, was the prize. And like the the tile in the vanilla game to say, "Hey, I'm Chris Hulahan, Blah 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 blah. You know, I'm in the game. Yay! Meanwhile, both of our runners now going to be making making their way over the mini Moldorm cave. And Bob choosing the uh, both runners choosing some difficult strats here. Bob's maybe a little bit less less of a hassle here if we can get this arrow lined up. Yeah, without a sword, kind of use uh, some interesting strats to kill these Molnorms here. Yeah, we're seeing a hammer on uh, Emlid's side and a... We're seeing the bow on Bob's side. And unfortunately, not a whole lot there from... From Mini Moldorm Cave, just some... Pieces of heart, a 50 rupee, and a 10 arrow upgrade. Well, hey, certainly could be worse. It could be. So yeah, checking back with the uh, the runner biographies, Emlyn had said that he was looking for a fire rod or a hammer start, and I have to believe he's pretty happy as well. Bob, Bob of course, loves his powder. So, getting a death orb here from Emlyn, I think. Seems like he's uh, setting up the water run, if I had to guess. Oh yeah, setting up the water run. That's right. That would make more sense. You know, half hard though. I gotta be careful. I'm that aware of this healthy. glitch, though. Personally, I'm not completely clear how it works. Indeed. So, Silver's up on Lake Hilly Island. Okay. Better believe both our runners will be coming back for that at some point. Oh, almost certainly. He's a blue meringue. Big 20, and the Moon Pearl, hiding out Sasro's hut. Oh, there's a magic cape and the sword, but Bob's already got Dark World access with the uh, Titan Smith and Moon Pearl. And Big 20 up on Zora's ledge. Emlyn gonna go ahead and check the Zora life lesson for today. Accidentally loses water walk status and have to take the slightly longer way around. That's okay. And Bob's actually dipping into the dark world here. Interesting. I mean, it's still early, but there's a lot Ooh. of places he could go. But Emlyn's got the uh, got the master sword sword upgrade on good old Zora there. Actually paying off for once. How about yeah, that? I would say that's worth 500 rupees. So interestingly enough, Emlyn has everything that's needed to go ahead now and take care of Aghanim. But we know that just a moment here, he'll find the Moon Pearl in the back and that will go straight out the window. Yeah, nobody likes that wizard anyway. Okay, ooh. So, the other red crystal is hiding out at Thieves Town, and your pendant dungeons in the Dark World are going to be uh, Skull Woods and Turtle Rock. Ooh, 
which unfortunately, for those of you keeping score at home, that's going to greatly restrict the number of things that can still be on the pedestal. Greatly, greatly restricted because TR is the either of items. Uh, both the swords uh, were up near Zora. One is in Waterfall Cave, and the other is on Zora, it, uh, Zora King himself. And Bob is making progress here through Palace of Darkness. Correctly uh, noting that everything except a... You don't need a sword necessarily to get past all the things here, but... Correctly noting that uh, you would have everything needed to complete this dungeon, so dipping into it probably will follow up with Eastern. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the mirror, so can't just go back to back real quick, but... I would I would imagine Eastern is going to be the play immediately following Palace of Darkness here. Very likely. Oh, okay. That solves that. There's the mirror. Always a good time to find Mirror in Palace of Darkness. Commentator Curve strikes again, immediately talking about, well, Bob can't do this, he doesn't have Mirror. Immediately finds Mirror. I mean, is that really a curse? Well, it feels more like a blessing in this case. I guess so. This will actually turn out to be a nice play for Bob. Can be able to go back to back here, complete both these dungeons while Emlyn is right now going through Eastern Palace. We'll have to go the uh, slightly longer way around to get. And Bob leaves a rupee behind as well. I'm going to shame both of them after this race. There's the Canaberna. You never leave your rupees behind, kids. They're important. Both runners will get a, a small talking to for me after the race about rupee management there. Just a single rupee for Bob. He's going to switch to the hammer, take out the Kodongos. Unfortunately, only picking up a 10 pack of bombs in there. He's going to get this last one while Emlyn. Going ahead and taking out the Armos Knights here. So, uh, another interesting fact. Unfortunately, Bob doesn't know this, but there's the Kane to Samaria. Oh my goodness. But to say, taking out those Armos Knights quickly and getting very nicely rewarded for it, the Kane's going to be very, very helpful here. This is just the seed that keeps on giving, apparently. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> and Bob's going to go to the back, take out Helmasaur King. Man, we get, this has been this has been stacked from the get go here. Yeah, I believe Emlyn is going to be making the trip now to Palace of Darkness. 
So positive here is that Emlyn will have a small time save with the Canis Maria in that one room that Bob just went through. Not doing a map check. Bob's going to have the probably the better time save because he'll be able now to mirror straight into Eastern Palace. Yeah, I'm just looking at the items here. I believe at this point we're only missing Flipper's flute and whatever medallion is needed for Meyer. Unless I'm Indeed. missing something here. No, I think you are uh, right on the ball with that. And I believe uh, those can all be locked on the pedestal based on what we have. Uh, they're not needed to complete any of the pendant dungeons here, so... Still a possibility this seed could throw, you, throw us sideways and have a uh, pendant pull required. Oh, right. The hook shot. I, hook shot I always well. forget the hook shot. The most forgettable item in this video game. Indeed. So we're looking at four items then. Uh, Meyer pendant, flippers, hook shot, and flute. Meanwhile, having to do without the sword, having to kind of do this the old fashioned way and break those little chunks off of Helmosaur King's mask. He's got nine hits in at least. Once you get halfway through breaking the, the, uh, the mask there, that second chunk pops off. And once you get the 17, the whole thing flies apart just like that. Now he just has to shoot some arrows into the green spot. And that's enough. Well done. Truly a shame we never see anybody use bomb strats on good old Helmosaur. <laughs> the big 20 for all his efforts. Wow. So, one crystal apiece. Uh, we're going to see Emlyn go through, obviously, Palace of Darkness right now. And Bob, I would assume, will go ahead and, as we've mentioned before, immediately go into Eastern Palace. So, I think we'll probably see a runner's be uh, tied at two crystals here very shortly. What? That's interesting. Uh, Emlyn had the, uh, the one remaining Gurria was actually they're supposed to kind of follow your in inputs in the inverse. I was actually following the uh, the inputs on the controller. That's kind of weird. Korea, you you've had too much. Go home. Really quick here, we're going to be looking at two crystals probably around 32, 33 minutes. So that's that's a really good start. And I believe they uh, still have access to a few more here. Indeed. Uh, chat's asking, was Canaan Eastern Palace? It was. It's on our most nights. It's going to be the drop that Bob's going to get here in a little bit. So we've got some interesting uh, possibilities here for where Bob can go next. A lot of places still to check. Could go back to the Dark World, go down to Hype Cave, check that area. Maybe make his way over to Village of Outcasts, kind of the long southern path there. Or uh, could go up and get the sword out of Zora. Swords, I should say, plural. 
don't mm-hmm. believe either runner's been on Death Mountain yet. That's also a possibility with the mirror that also puts the uh, Tower of Hera into play. And with the hammer on top of that, you have access to Paradox Cave. Yes, indeed. So, whole bunch of uh, Paradox Cave and Spiral Cave. And with the uh, the gloves, they can go do everything except for the last three chests in Hookshack Cave. So they've got a lot of stuff that's open, actually. This scene has definitely been very friendly toward the runners, getting giving them an early lamp, uh, so that they can they can do this just uh, just without having to use any kind of fun strats. Is that how you define dark rooms as fun? Well, there's some fun strats to take care of some of these Eastern Palace dark rooms, at least, especially the one that Bob just went through. There's three or four different ways and in fact Bob and I last night were talking about a couple of them using ether medallion if you have it the fire rod uh, if you've got the master sword you can use the and you have full hearts you can actually use the the charge beam from the sword to kind of ping out where the uh, the igors are and then go ahead and just ping them with your sword because the green ones you can take care of with the sword yeah and both uh both runners now in a boss fight emlyn using the kind of the more traditional sword uh charge plus hammer technique there keeps link from uh bouncing around in the wrong direction Bob's got the uh, Bob's got the King of Samaria. Nicely done. And one will be finishing up this fight in just a moment. And the saving clip from Bob. Going to Sanctuary. Might be going up to Death Mountain. Emlyn's going to be, I believe, going to, back to Dark World, so probably Hype Cave. Maybe going to pick up those silvers as well, considering that you've got Misery Mire, Swamp Palace uh, still ahead of you. Plus Ganon fight, of course. Pretty sure you need flippers to get the silvers, though. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. Well, technically, you could... There is a way to fake Flipper. There is a way to fake Flipper to uh, in the Dark World. That's just really, really difficult. And you don't really see it too often. Old man has the ice rod today. But Emlyn's gonna go ahead and check Hype Cave, so let's uh, let's measure our hype here, everybody. Well, Bob's gonna go check the inside of Spectacle Rock and we find a little bit of love and a little bit of love on the NPC in Hype Cave. Ten arrow upgrade. There's a tempered sword. Five bomb upgrade and a five arrow upgrade. Okay. Well, that's a three out of ten. 
I mean, tempered saves it from being pretty low hype. Indeed, and this is this is unfortunate for Bob, uh, in a way that there's three swords. Emlyn has all of them so far. Bob doesn't have a single one. Yeah, short of there being a sword in Tower of Hair, I guess, uh, gonna have to smash Trolldorm with a hammer. Indeed. Ooh, but digging game time. All right, let's hit <laughs> two digs, and it's a heart. Well, at least it was quick. Yes. At least if it was nothing, it was quick. Uh, Emlyn grabbing a few more rupees. I think looking for enough rupees to do the uh, chess game up here in Village of Outcasts. So that's that's a smart heads up play. Bob, unfortunately, missing that bob and jump there. Indeed, just a, a good time as any to remind everybody that uh, to follow both of our runners. They're putting on a fun show tonight, doing a good, good job here in this two and three matchup. So. Always, always worthwhile to follow. Follow all of our runners, especially if you like Rando and you're here. So I I assume that's the case. Kind of waiting for Russian air. Bob's got a nice kill. A nice hammer kill onto Moldorm. Just for a big 20. You know, Emlyn picking up the Bombos medallion. Yes, indeed we are. Well, that's, that's one of three. Could certainly be the case that this this is the only one you need. Uh, if both both Turtle Rock, if if needed for some reason, and Misery Meyer or Bombos, which is within the possibility, could be the only uh, thing we need. And plus, that would also, if they didn't have Fire Rod, give access to Ice Palace. I'd certainly say it's still nice to have, even with the Fire Rod. As uh, in some cases, Bombos would use less magic, such as <laughs> blowing up Cold Stairs shell. Yeah, I see some people in chat man, catching that I did almost say Bombos tablet there. You, you'll find that I will say that actually a lot, because uh, I'll be th I'll be thinking in the runner sense. I'll be thinking, oh, gotta go check the tablet. Wait, no, it's a medallion. I'm talking about. Dang it! And Bob getting that nice, nice coffee break there. Ooh, finishing it off with a impressive, 
hero shot. Flute! Flute! Oh my goodness. That's a what flute! A Finally, Hera Basement paying off. Oh, that's incredibly nice. Very, very nice find. Good decision by Bob to go up there and check that basement looking for that second item. We're just going to go ahead and pick up the fairy. Flippers! Oh, no. Flippers are up on uh, Hookshot Cave. What is the seed? What is this? I believe this is called Link to the Past Randomizer. Game guy, please. But 40 minutes and... I didn't even know what what's left. Hookshot is the only thing really that's left that we're looking for. And Meyer Medallion, if it's not Bombos. Bob's got three crystals done already. Emlyn's working on third crystal right now, so this is this is the almost the jettiest of jet seeds. I feel like this is particularly good for Bob because finding flippers is likely to lead him to Zora area to get two swords. Indeed, and he'll also probably get a chance to see where those silvers are, and I would assume go pick those up at some point. Did he not check where silvers were? No, he hasn't been down there yet. Hmm. Because remember that Emlyn found those doing the uh, the water walk. So now we're getting to see what's in the top half of Paradox Cave here. Haven't really found anything in any of these chests so far. It's been kind of a kind of a troll. Everything's been outside, or it's been very very early. Yeah, I found Paradox Cave to be relatively hit and miss. There's a be in a bottle. There's a shield. 20 rupees. That's our first bottle, isn't it? Indeed. I think that is the uh, first bottle. So Sick Kid will also be in play here for Bob when he goes to uh, make sure that the goose is loose. He's going to do a bomb jump across. Very nicely done. Uh, but yes, for, the, for those asking in chat, can Hookshot be on pedestal? By the logic that the dungeons are laid out, yes. <laughs> and it would be the easiest way for this seed to go completely sideways is for that to be a, ped a pedestal item. TR check here. Well, Emlyn is taken on blind. It's going to be Ether for Turtle Rock. And Emlyn on to phase three of this fight, making very quick work of blind to pick up the map. Well, hey, always a good time to know what the dungeon looks like once you're done with it. Mm hmm. And I, I see, uh, I see um, <laughs> that blind little statement there, catching some of the uh, the chat people off guard. Because um, it looks like it's it looks like blind is saying that Meyer is either Bombos or Quake. It uh, blind is actually saying Meyer is Ether Bombos or Quake. So absolutely not a helpful uh, hint at all from blind. Because of course it's going to be one of those three medallions. You need a medallion to get in. Oh, Baba almost, almost jumped back across, but going back up top to the floating island, and we will get our flippers now. Well, Emlyn is checking the graveyard ledge.
So I'm kind of curious where Bob is heading to now. Spike cave, maybe? Okay, it seem, seems like it. Seems like it. Meanwhile, Emlyn's gonna go up and check the bumper cave. We'll see. It is an item up there, but it is the red meringue, and that will be a hard pass. And Emlyn now joining the trip up to the rock here. I quite like this routing. Heading over to Bumper Cave and then mirroring back to ascend Death Mountain in that fashion. Indeed. Uh, so if I was wondering why Bob doesn't have any swords yet, just hasn't check the locations where the swords are which are waterfall cave zora and pipe cave so you know what he is doing you go get that duck so ladies and gentlemen if you would please be so kind to uh to remove your hats and Rise for the Spike Deck National Anthem. Thank you very much. You may be seated and continue your rando viewing experience. Always a beautiful tune. Always a beautiful bird, too. That as well. Indeed. And I believe we determined, because the duck is both the same in the light world and the dark world, that the duck sees itself, or like the duck's inner self is also a duck. And Bob just saw the silvers there, so he'll know that that's a thing that he'll want to pick up. I believe this means that Bob is going to go up to Zora now. Just picking up the big 20 from the hobo. Yeah, he'll be real happy to see those swords. So, th so that means that the duck is the purest thing in the game, the chat tells me. Yes, that is exactly 100% what it means. I'd believe it. I'm contractually obligated to believe it. And indeed, Bob, we'll be getting two swords here. And when unfortunately feeling that Palm Jump gonna fall two levels down. And Bob's got his sword and his cape. So, yeah, I believe both runners managed to uh, to miss that bomb jump and fell through the hole and fell down two stories. Yeah, that's a rough one to miss. Yep. Hey, congratulations, Bob. You got yourself a master sword. Emlyn's going to try the bomb jump again. Gets it on the second try, only finds a small key, but that's a good thing. Because that will take him to the basement to pick up the flute. While Bob, going to the Dark World, may be thinking about Silvers. I'm probably also thinking about uh, Hype Cave. Let me get that third sword. Oh, yes, indeed. Getting all three swords, one right after the other. He's very much going to have a what is the seed kind of thought in just a moment here when he opens that up, up that chest and gets that third sword. Thank you. 
Ah, and he is going for with the mirror. He is going for the uh, the silvers right now. Good call. Good play. I mean, if you see silvers somewhere that you can easily go get, why leave them? Exactly, especially considering that the uh, the dungeons are still there that will, those will be useful in. Hamlin will be taking a coffee break shortly here. And then picking up a musical instrument afterward. Certainly a worthwhile coffee break. Ah, uh, missed the mystic lip. Gonna use the other nice little thing that he can do, which is the, the one I usually prefer to do. Just use the cape, stand against the wall, grab it, pull back, and does not use any magic. It's a nice little glitch. So let's see. Worlds is left that hasn't been checked thus far. Well, um, let's think about this for a moment. Desert. Uh, nobody's been out to desert yet. And that's fully clearable at this point. And it's a green pendant, so. Well, I don't think anyone's been to Mire area for that matter either. Nope. Uh, nobody's been to Mire. Nobody's been to desert. Ice Palace should be openable now with what they both have, or what they will have shortly, because Emlyn will be picking up the flippers in just a second here. First half of Swamp Palace is open, but I don't know if you really want to go ahead and jump in there with, when you can possibly be going in there in go mode. I mean, that said, there are six items in there. It's a fairly hefty amount. That is true, but only four chests are potentially at a minimum available based on uh, where everything's laid out in there. If you get the big key, you get a fifth chest. If you don't have the hook shot, the remaining chests are not... Uh, not in the logic at that point. I'm not sure why. I keep forgetting nobody has the hookshot. Just, yeah. it's escaped my mind. <laughs> it's all right. We're about 53 minutes in here. Both of our runners will be on four crystals shortly, so... Both making very good progress through here. Just looking for, uh, really for hookshot at this point, and they'll need to check and see what they need to get into Misery Mire. And of course, all that talk about runners not having hookshot has immediately gotten chat happy about the possibility of a Hookshot on pedestal once again. And that's the other thing too, is there could be fetch quest items on the pedestal as well that could lead to a progression item.
Did either runner check K45? Emlyn did. It wasn't, oh. it wasn't anything. Okay. I only asked because the chat was asking about it, and I don't remember seeing it, so... Yeah, I, uh... I happened to see that. Yeah, Emlyn went and checked it shortly after doing the uh, digging game. Bob's got crystal number four now. And when meanwhile going to check the bonk chest there in Hoshak Cave will not find it and is instead gonna go up to get the flippers. I'd expect he's probably gonna go grab those silvers, but beyond that I'm not real sure where he might head. Yeah, that's kind of the big question now. Our runners are essentially chasing tracing over each other's steps, or you could say chasing each other's footsteps. Kind of interesting to see who's going to make a, uh, a big play next here. There we go. Finally, everybody wants to ask, what's that sick kid? Well, Dr. Bob will cure our, our child friend of his ailment. And it's a shovel. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, boy. Here we go. Why does that child have a have a garden implement in his bed? That seems that seems like that could be a problem. I mean, normally he just has a bug net. I'm not real sure why you would keep that with you in bed regardless. Bob was thinking for a moment to do uh, hammer pegs. Instead, gonna go ahead and probably go do the shovel stuff now. Yeah, digging game and probably the shovel spot. Well, where is Emlyn going? Is Emlyn gonna do uh, sick kid now as well? Nope, I'll get flute first. That's right. Uh, two and three, for those asking in chat, two and three are their record in the Swiss rounds here. So they have two wins and three losses each. Yeah, I think yeah, he's going to go ahead and do all of the the trading stuff here in one fell swoop, which is not a bad idea. Emlyn is going to make the play into Desert. Going to check. There's only five um, upgrades sitting up on the Desert Ledge. Now going to go ahead, go back in, and we'll get to see what that Misery Mire Medallion is. Just a moment here. Please be Ether. <laughs> Oh, it's Quake. Okay. It's not much better, really. The only reason that the only reason I like to see Ether on there is because that way you can do the uh, the bird toss or the bird tote, which are things I enjoy. There's the butter sword. That's all swords present and accounted for. Indeed. So yeah, very interesting there that the. Uh, Turtle Rock and Misery Mire medallions have been swapped from their vanilla um, requirements. I've actually seen this quite a bit for some reason. You know, I'm uh, aware the odds are uh, decently yes. high of that happening, but. Indeed. Uh, meanwhile, Bob is going to go to K45, aka South of Grove Cave, with the purple chest in tow. So probably we'll do digging stuff in Stumpy after this. Just a big 20 up there. And we're going to go into uh, Desert Palace. Not a bad play. 
not a bad play at all. You've got enough to clear it, and it's green pendant, so potentially worthwhile. And just a single Ruby Stumpy, you've let us down again. I mean, to be fair, he is rooted to the ground. It's not much he can really do. Yeah, just a big 20 digging spot, so lots of trollage. Bob's is, I think Bob's is going to go ahead and flute down to seven and walk the chest over. Do you wonder if he will now go into desert looking for stuff? Just 300 rupees in that purple chest. There's the book. Well, that's convenient. <laughs> So yeah, Flute is your access both into uh, Meyer and Desert Palace. Well, we've then also found the Mushroom in here, so... Mm-hmm. So that's, uh... That's two of the three possibilities. With Green Pendant being the third possible item. Meanwhile, we're gonna see Agina's Cave. What's in here? Nope. Nothing of value. Uh, Magic Bat was checked and it was pretty much nothing. So... Nothing to really worry about there. Just a piece of heart. And when we'll do the, the mushroom turn in, we'll get to see if this is going to be leading us anywhere. Well, Bob now going to do Desert Palace. Mushroom for a bomb smile. And then going back to the dark world. Probably gonna go get those silver arrows, if I'm guessing. I think that's a, uh, a logical move here. And then maybe kind of route up. Yeah, it is, there's the mirror out, so I think that's exactly what the plan is. Actually, I noticed uh, Pyramid Fairy is an option, too. It's true. Uh, Pyramid Fairy definitely within the logic here with Eastern Palace and Steve Town both uh, taken care of. Oh, Emlyn hasn't done Hobo yet, so that's, that's going to be the auto check here. Pyramid Fairy has not been checked. We haven't even seen the Pyramid item. That was a very forgettable location, it seems. Despite being so easily available. So, chat asking, why aren't you doing Swamp Palace or Ice Palace? Swamp Palace because they don't have the hook shot. So, if you don't find it within the first four or five chests, uh, you're looking at a, a double dip for Swamp Palace, and you really don't want to do that. Ice Palace, again, uh, you can do it. You can clear it without the hook shot, but having the hook shot, if you're going to full clear Ice Palace, makes it a heck of a lot easier. And no one really wants to do Ice Palace outside of go mode. Yeah. There's a couple of dungeons that you, like Ice Palace and Turtle Rock generally are not ones that you want to do, have to, to go into and spend a lot of time because they are very time consuming. Seems like Emlyn might be going to Skull. Or not. No, I think we're going to see the, the check here of some of the uh, the things that Emlyn hasn't done yet. Like the chest turn in. Oh, I <laughs> forgot. You're too early.
Bob's gonna do uh, a check here of the Bombos tablet. Wonder if he might be planning to dip swamp after that. Ah, just the big twenty. I think Emlyn's just trying to, th to think logically. Where can I go now? That I haven't checked yet. Oh, she also lost the purple chest, so. That's, Oof. that's not fun. Yeah, I, I was assuming this is going to be a dick spot check real quick here. There's that big red bomb, and Dr. Bob Tastic has got it. You know, Emlyn will be going back to the Dark World, it seems perhaps to follow in Bob's footsteps here. So we'll get to see what's in here from Bob's side first. Oh, there's the quake. There it is. Well, that's one more piece to this puzzle solved. So yeah, we're a hook shot away from go mode now. It's also the only thing that could be on the pedestal that would force them to do a pedestal pull. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of places that aren't horrible left to check. Yeah, I think I think what we've been seeing from Bob and Emlyn is just kind of a uh, a canvas of the places that they can go that aren't going to be too terrible to do. We're starting to run out of nice places and leaving nothing but dungeons that are really going to be a pain in the butt. Uh, hookshot can't be in GT because it's needed. It's a necessary item for completion of Swamp Palace, and any item that's needed to complete a Crystal Dungeon cannot possibly be in Ganon's Tower. If that were to be the case, the logic would be broken, the game seed would not be completable, and we would be probably rescheduling this for another time. The nice thing, though, is with V29, by this point, we've kind of got all of those those little bugs worked out, so that should not be a problem or something that we run across here. Oh, okay. <laughs> just You just thought that... Yeah, you just thought Swamp Palace was pending. That's all right. was green pendant reward uh we don't know that yet they haven't done that they have not done a uh, green pendant turn in they haven't even completed desert palace to see you know what would even possibly be on the green pendant yet so and go ahead to Meyer seems like yeah uh, are they running the same route not they're not intentionally doing the same things. They are, uh, they're just kind of following the logic. And in this case, the logic is pointing them in the same direction here. I believe Bob has checked more overworld locations than Emlyn has. So should this be a scenario where this turns up kind of dry, 
Bob uh, would have the lead if they went back to checking overworld locations. If they both dipped into Ice Palace, probably would be fairly even. Yeah, all things considered, this is still a pretty close race. Absolutely. Emlyn, as far as we can tell right now, Emlyn's only... In fact, they're going to high-five right here going up the stairs. Uh, just about a room behind Bob right now. And as far as their items and whatnot go, they've got pretty much all of the same things at this point. They've essentially just been kind of doing the same thing things just at different times so you know Bob would go off and do Thieves Count and Emlyn would go do something else and then they essentially swip, uh, swap spots and go do the thing that the other person was doing so this this has been a fairly close race throughout yeah I recall earlier I was mentioning that uh, small little time saves don't matter much in the grand scheme of things, but they add up, and it seems like I'm eating my words at this point, almost. Indeed, a little bit of divergence there with the the checks here. Bob went back to check the, the one chest that was blocked by the switch. Emlyn has gone on and decided to... In fact, they're in the same room right now. I think Emlyn's going to go up, and Bob's going to follow shortly thereafter. There's the big key. Now I believe they're both going to end up going to the vanilla uh, big key room here. How did Bob get behind? He got behind for like a nanosecond because he went back into the main room of Misery Mire and checked an extra chest that Emlyn has not checked yet. Yeah, that, that one main room chest, Bob's already checked that. Emlyn hasn't done that yet, so this will give Bob a small amount of cushion. I noticed actually on Emlyn's side... Um, there are too many sprites on the screen or something when he picked up the pot with the magic refill under it mm -hmm. caused it not to spawn he had Ooh. barely enough magic to do the next room that's not fun Disappointing as well. Yeah, both both items now fished out of Misery Mire. It's a shield upgrade in a big twenty, but it's not a hook shot. Oh, did he pick up the magic earlier? I must have missed that. My bad. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. That would make sense. If Emlyn picked it up earlier, then that would account for some of the discrepancy. Yes, indeed. Both runners are running the same seed. And Bob, what are you doing? Okay. Just had to stop and check the map, I guess. Yeah, very interesting, but still fairly close. Both runners, in fact, in the same room right now. Making their way through all of this. And 
neither one are, I think, using that. That new trick that has just been found out recently involving Candice Maria and the Fire Rod. It's an incredible trick, but... Uh, he's having some capable issues on his control. Okay, that would that would explain some of what some of the things we just saw there from Bob. Uh, if he's having some issues with the cable on his controller, it might be eating a few of the inputs. So that could uh, that would explain why he would have stopped there for just a moment. Fair enough reason. You know, doing some very nice uh, cape down strats there. Easily putting away video with those silvers. I guess the question now is where to next? Yes, indeed. I think it's probably going to have to be uh, Skull Woods. If you really want to take a gamble, you could you could do Ice Palace and wager that it's uh, it's completable. Yeah, Bob's going to do it. He's going to he's going to make the gamble here. I mean, at this point, I almost don't blame him. Yeah, I would think, you know, maybe just clear out the, uh, clear out the Crystal Dungeon first, and m one's gonna go back and try and do the, do the, um, chest again. So there is a possibility that the oh well, we're gonna get to see <laughs> the uh, nice quake strat there. Can get rid of all of the penguins. But uh, you know we we'll get to see how the ice palace keys are laid out here and the items. Certainly a possibility possibility that uh, we may not even need hookshot to access those three right side chests. Alternatively, there are a uh, few tricky bomb jumps you could do. to go into Swamp Palace. Got two different gambles on both sides here. So, it'll be very interesting to see if one gamble pays off, or if neither gamble pays off, both possibly uh, could happen here. And uh, with the key management, it's going to bypass that need for the hook shot. I mean, there really aren't a whole lot of places left. 
They can't get to Turtle Rock without Ether. Right. Skull Woods only has the two items. I believe they got both items from Desert. They did, but there's also a third item there with the green pendant. Uh, green pendant turn-in is an item, so... It's true. Could be required. chest that uh, Bob has got to check here. He's got the key, so we can go ahead and open up that big key. Pretty sure it's just three more? It's not checked iced tea yet, right? I don't think so. There it is! Bob's in That's go, mode. go mode. One hour, 21 minutes, 53 seconds. Dr. Bob Tastic is in go mode. And away he goes. So that's the answer to our question. Where is Hookshot? Big chest inside of Ice Palace. Oh my. It's going to be real unfortunate for Emlyn, given he's going to have to come back into Swamp later to actually finish the thing. Yeah, and probably going to see a full clear of the uh, the pre-Hookshot stuff here for Emlyn. And that's just going to lead nowhere. Yeah, with basically all of the safeties, there's next to nothing he could even find in here that would be helpful. Yeah, the worst thing would be finding something that would uh, send him on a quest somewhere else looking for that. You know, Bob is already going to town on Cold Stair. Beautiful, beautiful job. There's Ether. Okay, so that's not going to be a problem. That's not going to be something Emlyn's going to find and think, I need to go up to Turtle Rock. Yeah, I was uh, pretty worried about that possibility. Yeah, that was kind of in the back of my head. Just just thinking there for a moment. If Ether shows up here, that could be a that could be a huge false flag. But that will not be a problem tonight. You know, Bob is just going to be taking off here. They very quickly go over to. His house can do the uh, draining of the swamp in both the light and dark worlds, and then into Swamp Palace, go mode, super fast. It was Silvers and Butter Sword. Argus just doesn't stand a chance. Yeah, that's going to be super, super quick here. Now, the race isn't quite... The race isn't super over yet. I know Emlyn's going to have to go ahead and go through Ice Palace and get the hook shot. That's going to take a ton of time. But it's always a possibility, as small as it might be, that Bob could really screw something up and there could be a time loss there. But he definitely has the advantage we can we can definitely say he has the significant advantage going into uh, the back half of this race. And Emlyn, unfortunately, finding that big key is going to lead him to check one more chest before he bails out of here and probably goes to Ice Palace, which was the the decision that was correct. And just finds the, the mirror shield. Now, boy, that would have been if it had been ether and mirror shield showing up inside of the first half of Swamp Palace. How hard does that make you think you have to go to TR? And that you might be looking at laser bridge hook shot. I mean, I probably would do it. 
Yeah. So, um, thankfully, not finding that ether there, we'll send Emlyn in the correct decision to go to Ice Palace, and uh, he will be picking up his hook shot here in a couple minutes, depending upon how quick we get a check of that uh, that big chest there. That's a good point too. Uh, having having the cape might also uh, kind of put a little bit of a, a stop to that thinking too about TR. Well, they also have Kane and Berna. Right. But yeah, Dr. Bob very quickly now. Skipping a whole bunch of stuff doesn't need. We'll be super, super quickly making the trip to visit Argus. Yeah, Ice Palace has been available for a considerable amount of time for our runners. I feel like the thought, and I feel like maybe once we talk to Bob and Emily about this, I feel like the thought is neither want neither wanted to go and have to uh, to full clear Ice Palace to find something. Probably would have preferred to go mode it, but it turns out that uh, full clearing it was the right decision. I mean, given where the big key was, if you wanted to just gamble on the big chest right away, that's Indeed. close enough to go mode. Indeed. And Bob just uh, machine gunning those little puffs away. Very nice job. Always a fantastic way to kill Argus. Indeed. Missed on the silver shot, but gets two slashes with that butter sword, so no big problem. And, well, it's about that time again. So, as Bob gets up to uh, Death Mountain there, time to get that big key location gas in for Ganon's Tower. Just remember uh, that you can guess, anyone can guess in the chat. Uh, the first closest guess from a supporter of the channel, which is somebody who subscribed or has given more than 250 bits, you get to be on the leaderboard. So, uh, Game Bad, what are you thinking as far as where the where the big key is? What number you got? I mean, I gotta go with number eight. Number eight. Ooh, that's a good. That's always a good guess. Uh, in a normal routing. That's usually the fire bar either... room, right? Yeah, if you go full left side, it's fire bar room. If you do the right side first, that will put it in the uh, first chest in the the dark magician room on the left side there. And I always like to say number 12, which usually comes out to be somewhere in rando room. So I like when Randar Room has uh, has value. And M, of course, is also now in go mode, having picked up the uh, hook shot here in Ice Palace. But we'll still have to finish out the second half of Swamp Palace. While Bob is going to be dipping into Yen's Tower. Certainly could be in Bob's chest. It was in Bob's chest last night. Um, in the race I was commentating with Bob, it was in his. It was in Bob's chest, which was fun. Entirely too fitting. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. 
<laughs> Number one. And a small key to boot. Oh my goodness. This that is this is the most optimal of possible layouts. Oh my goodness. Okay. So the correct answer is one. Not very often you get to put that number in the chat, but congratulations to Count Extreme for for guessing closest. Um, count, let me go up here. Yeah, Count Extreme, he did in fact guess right on the dot, picked one. And I did see that there were a couple of one guesses after that as well, so... If you guessed one, even if you didn't get on the leaderboard there, if you guessed one at all, give yourself a big pat on the back because, wow, that was, that was a heck of a guess. Can Bob beat GT before Go Mode Swamp is complete? I would say no, because uh, Go Mode Swamp is only going to be like two minutes here. Bob's probably got at least another, at least two minutes, and probably at least another two or three minutes on top of that just to get up to the Aga fight. Yeah, Go Mode Swamp is lightning fast. And you G blink and you miss it. Yeah, and GT is just, it is a slog no matter how much stuff you've got. There's things that make it go faster, but it, it just is such a long dungeon to have to crawl through. Uh, dang, what did... Uh, Emlyn's behind because... The, uh, the hook shot was in the big chest at Ice Palace. Bob went and checked that almost immediately once they'd both completed Misery Mire. And Emlyn went into Swamp Palace, did the first half, didn't find anything, and then went to Ice Palace. So that first half, that first half dip into Swamp Palace is what the difference is right now between the two runners. See the uh, the Willard strats as well. Always a pleasure to see those. trouble with that wizard room yes indeed i think i think uh yeah, i think it's i think i remember it with willard strats if you pause a little bit before entering that uh that room with lamo to fight you can get them all to kind of spawn right next to each other you can kill them all pretty quickly Bob, now up to floor six. For those of you wondering, the answer still is no. Uh, Bob is not going to complete GT before Emlyn goes ahead and finishes up going out to Swamp Palace. But Bob did get pretty far. He's up on, on floor six. Just now getting to the, uh, the last couple of rooms here. Hello, Moldorm. How are you, buddy? Probably not feeling particularly thrilled to see uh, his new friend here. Nope. And this is what we like to call revenge. So, let's uh, do another quick little guess here. How many blue balls do you think Aga is going to throw out tonight? I can't imagine it's that many, given this is the rematch, but... 
I'm gonna go with like two. Two. All right, that's a reasonable number. So let's see what this RNG holds up for us. Ooh, ooh, very nice, Bob. Getting getting a double to start with here. And just a single there. Missed the uh, missed the chance at the double, but that's fine. Oh, there's one. So that one. Ooh, that's a nice. Nice item. Oh. oh, okay, the answer is one. So for those of you once again who guessed one, congratulations, pat yourself on the back. You did it. Unfortunately, there's no leaderboard for this one. Tragic. So yeah, it's going to be a 2-1-0-1-2 on that uh, Aga fight. So pretty good. Pretty good. And we're about to get some Ganon facts. If we were meant to not have midnight snacks, then why is there a light in the fridge? That's a good thing to think about. Especially since for those of us who are on the eastern coast of the United States and or Canada, it's about almost midnight. Almost we're, snack time. We're just in time. How convenient. We're already on the phase three, getting those teleports in. I mean, Butter Sword just absolutely shreds Ganon at this point. Yeah, it makes it relatively quick and painless to get through those first two, first two uh, phases, and three and four are just kind of the same no matter what, unless you're doing Master Sword, Master Sword spins. Of course, as soon as I say that, our, our friends in the uh, Atlantic time zone are like, it's 12.45 here. Well, of course, you mentioned the time anywhere. I do, yeah. <laughs> You're just asking for it. I, I know. And there we go. Nicely done from Bob. Just nice, simple Ganon fight. That is a dead pig. Okay, lots of bacon. GG to Dr. Bob those, Fastic. Indeed, get those GGs in chat. We've got Dr. Bob Fastic. Windfish will wake soon. Hoot! It's the wrong game, but I'll allow it because Link's Awakening is a good game. Uh, but <laughs> Dr. Bob Fastic finishing with an official SR TV time. One hour, 38 minutes, 17 seconds. Very nice time. Very nice run. And Emlyn is making his way up through the gauntlet right now. So we'll get Bob in here and we'll, we'll get to chastise him for skipping that one rupee. <laughs> I was wondering if you'd remember. Hello? Hey, how you doing, Bob? GG, congratulations. What? Oh, how? <laughs> uh, very simply put, you made the right call at, late in the game. Ice Palace yeah, the race play. literally came down to a choice between Ice Palace or Swamp Palace, and both of you picked the other the other's choice. Mm -hmm. So it really just came down to making the correct choice here. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I knew... I realized when I was over in the right-hand side of uh, Ice, I was like, wait, Hookshet can't actually be over here. Because this right side would be hookshot locked. Uh, whoops. And then I went down to the big chest and there it was. I was like, whoa! Yeah, so how, how'd you feel about that? Did you think that that maybe you were a little bit behind with that at that point? Or... I don't know. I feel like I feel like I made every right decision in this race. Like, yeah. I, can't, I cannot imagine routing the seat any better. I feel like my, my life is a lie. It's not, but, <laughs> you know. Well, for, for what it's worth, you and Emlyn were pretty much doing the identical routing throughout this seed. So you guys were fairly close up until you made that divergence between Swamp and Ice. That was that was the one big play that, uh, that really split you guys apart as far as your routing goes. 
Wow, did did Emlyn even like uh peace out to Pod after finding the Moon Pearl? I think uh, uh I think he did Eastern first and then went to yes. Pod afterwards. So like right. you did a lot of things in the opposite order, but still like ultimately the same things. Yeah, so you you guys like would bind uh bind Eastern and Pod together, but you did them like Emily did Eastern and then into Pod, and then you did Pod into Eastern. So, basically, when you guys were done, you were still kind of neck and neck. Are you guys having trouble with the with the Twitch chat? Uh, nope. Because I I can't seem to load the Twitch chat. It's really silly. Nah, <laughs> seems fine to me. Working here. So, anyways, you have a couple of things to ask you about as well, Bob. First off, those swords. <laughs> I literally got three like three in a man. row. Like, yeah. I was like, okay, so I got the flippers. It's unlikely my opponent went up here real quick to get the flippers. Maybe, maybe he did, but I should press my flippers advantage. So I'm like, I'll go do the flipper stuff. And I got one sword, then I got another sword. And while I was at it, I saw the silver arrows and I was like, well, better go get those. And so then I was like, okay, well, let's go to Hype Cave and then go get the silvers. And then we'll go over to, like, Thieves Town and all that mess. Just happened to get another sword. Well, and then I got the fourth one while I was checking to see if I had the medallion for Meyer, which I did not. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Emlyn fake flipper and got those two swords relatively early. So that was, that was again, another bit of divergence between you two. And we did find out the pedestal has the quote-unquote mad friend, which I believe means that's a bee in a bottle, right? Yes. I'm pretty sure that's it, yeah. I'm trying to remember my my, uh, my pedestal terminology there. We, we were wondering if Hookshot was going to be on pedestal because this, this seed was so nice to you guys. I'm like, there's got to be some kind of catch at some point, right? Yeah. I was like, it's it's gonna be pedestal, isn't it? I should I should just go check pedestal, and I, I didn't check pedestal because that was good. <laughs> and yep. I did not need to check the pedestal. Nope. We were wondering about that. We were wondering if anyone was gonna go check pedestal, but nope. And nobody see if I can even went over to chat on my phone because for some reason on my computer it's not working. It's really yeah. So uh, one other thing to mention in Palace of Darkness. You went downstairs and you cleaned up all of those those beautiful rubies. I did. And you missed one. I did. I missed one. Why do this to us? Oh, sorry. I. Well, I was just like, <laughs> I need to get a bunch of these because I think Zora's going to happen at some point. And I was just like grabbing a lot and I just didn't realize that I had. I know that I missed one, but I, I didn't realize I missed exactly one. Yeah, it was exactly one, which is funny because... Uh, when Emlyn gets in here, I'm going to be yelling at him about the exact same thing in a different spot. I imagine it probably uh, drove the obsessive compulsives in the audience a little nuts. Yeah, maybe. But uh, <laughs> it's just kind of funny. So Emlyn now on uh, Ganon fight here. Very nice and very very easy Ganon fight for you got for both of you, um, having that. Oh yeah, gold sword and the silver arrows. You know, I, I, uh, there we go. I fi finally can see the, the the chat. So thanks for the thanks for the GGs, everybody. Indeed. So uh, while we're while we're talking about things that are relatively easy in Ganon. How about that, uh, that GT big key showing up in the first chest? Yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> how, how has this seed ever been so nice, and then it was still nice? I don't understand. I, I what was, sort of weird scenario have I landed in? I don't know. Like, That was bizarre, just because not only was it, uh, you know, that first chest having this, the uh, big key... Next chest had a small key, so I was like, okay, you've got everything you need. Just go upstairs. Jeez. Don't even need to go check Bob's torch. Never even got that far. 
No, unfortunately not tonight. And Emlyn just finishing up in a moment here. Yeah, this should be pretty quick. Indeed. I surprised even myself <laughs> picking up the torch glitch from where I did. <laughs> and when setting something up. Oh, right. Just running out of the arrows. <laughs> and a GG to Emlyn, who's going to finish within official SRTV time of 1 hour 46 minutes and 17 seconds after firing off all of his remaining arrows. And Emlyn has joined us. <laughs> GG, Emlyn. Uh, GG, Dr. Bob. Yep. Oh. What do I keep telling you about Swamp Palace, man? What do I keep telling you? <laughs> oh, that was that hurt. That hurt my soul. Yeah, unfortunately, we were, we were discussing it just uh, while you were finishing up that, but that was that was the difference. You guys were pretty much neck and neck throughout, and then you had that one divergence, and that ultimately turned out that to be the gap was the check from uh, the first half of Swamp Palace there. That was pretty much the time gap. Yeah, that two. sounds about right. Uh, and the frustrating thing is, as soon as I finished it, I was like, you know what, that was the wrong play. I should have just gone to ice because I could full clear it and I can at least get the crystal. And it's only a single chest difference. Yep, and it turned out to be in that big chest all along. Yes, it did. <laughs> Thankfully, the keys worked out in yeah. there that with skipping bomb jump, I was still able to clear it without checking more. Indeed. So, um, two, th two things to mention with the early game for you, Emlyn. Uh, one, the Hulahan room. Uh, first time you did it, you kind of oh, that... didn't quite get it and you fell through. Yeah, I s kept pressing up for too long, so I just fell right back down into the basement of Escape. Yeah. And then the second time you did it, you cleaned it out except for one freaking rupee. <laughs> Why would you do that to us? Eh, it wasn't important. I had enough to do Zora and Easter, er, <laughs> Pod. <laughs> for, for what it's worth, Bob also did that in Pod, so I've, I've now grilled both of you on that, so you are, you are free to... <laughs> <laughs> to go to go bother some other commentator with that. Emlyn, did you get bombs and escape? Yes. I didn't get like a drop from anything. It's like everything was like, nope, you're not getting anything today. Yeah, I got. Uh, it was off one of the rats. I think it must have been. It was rats or snakes. I think it was a rat because I think you got it pretty early. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Yeah, it was in. It was somewhere in that second half of escape. I didn't get any of that, but after, like, the first section of everything, I had Boots and Titans Mint, so I'm like, well, I can do King's Tomb, Bonk Rocks, and that. Yeah, this seed was just super generous early on. Like, it was, like, I was talking with Dr. Bob, we, uh, Game Guy and I were talking just a moment ago. Um, did you think that there was going to be something some kind of twist or something maybe later on Emlyn about, you know, this seed is really nice at the start. It's going to, it's going to turn on me at some point. And there's going to be something that's going to be a, a huge pain in the butt to find. It's going to be somewhere very inconvenient. Oh yeah, definitely. Anytime in this version of randomizer, you get that good of a start. You're going to have some sort of bottleneck usually on one item, but sometimes two. So in this one, I was bottlenecked for a long time, obviously on hook shot, but I couldn't get an admire for a while either. Right. The, it's just sitting there on the pyramid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I actually saw that while I was uh, making the big bomb explode. Uh, it was like, I was like, I'm going to do Fat Fairy, I'm going to look at what's on the pyramid, I'm going to do Catfish. There was that, this was after turning in the mushroom from Desert. Oh, uh, so you dipped in there too. Yeah. Yeah, overall, I'm not too happy with my routing, um, especially at the end as I was hunting for that hook shot. I cleared too much of the overworld. Like, the way these seeds tend to work out, if you've cleared all of the overworld, you've done something wrong. There's usually progression in a dungeon, so with 
three dungeons that I had access to. Well, four, I guess, technically. Desert Palace still had an item in it with Pendant. I needed to be getting into one of those sooner. Yeah. I, I was going to check, like, so many other things before going to Swamp. But I was like, okay, let's do ice first. And then if I don't get to ice... I'll do some other things. Like, if I'd have found that Ether Medallion, I would have gone to Turtle Rock before going to Swamp. Like, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> no, yeah, Ether was one of the things I was really hoping not to find. Because I figured if Turtle Rock opened, then it was just an absolute coin flip as to who was going to win the seed, because there was three dungeons then, and only one of them was going to be right. I guess I'm a little surprised, just throughout it all, that uh, neither of you bothered to get the green pendant or even check Skullwoods, both of which seemed like pretty quick checks to me. Skullwoods was my next check after Ice. Uh, I I was like, I got the cape in Thieves Town. I was like, oh, I should go up there. But then I was, you know, I was going to do the south route and I ended up uh, finding a bunch of stuff. And, yeah, uh, Skull's not a bad check. Um but it's only two items, it's a pendant. And there was still two crystal dungeons with Swamp Palace and Ice Palace, so you gotta check those first. I mean, that's certainly fair. Yes, indeed. So, uh, I guess one thing to ask here would be, uh, is there anything else that you guys just wanted to, to mention real quick here? Um, I guess we could talk a little bit about, uh, Week seven coming up here too, and Dr. Bob Tastic, you are now three and three, so you've got uh, you got an even record going into week seven. Just looking for a win next week, or I, I would love to finish with a winning record. Let's put it that way. Indeed, and uh, Emlyn, unfortunately dropping to two and four, but still have a chance to get that third one next week in uh, week seven action. Any anything that you're hoping for, or anyone you're hoping to go up against here for a week seven? Oh, as to, close out the, uh... as to who to go against, no idea. I would definitely like to pick up a window. This is... Ah. Uh, I've lost some very frustrating seeds, and this is just another one of them. It's, it just felt so good early. Like, did Bob also end up doing the water walk glitch to get those two early swords? No, I actually got the mm. flippers up on Death Mountain, and then it was like, okay, I need to go do flipper locations. <laughs> Yeah, see, I felt really good with getting that. I'm like, I bet you Bob didn't do this, and I'm way ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I collected one less item than you. Wow. Yeah, I was actually curious what the collection rates were, given how close the seed was throughout. Indeed, you got Bob with the 138 here. 137, wow. I know, Emily, you, you had skipped some of the overworld locations that Bob had checked. So that was kind of... Which, which ones? Like, the only thing left on my tracker is uh, the rest of Hookshot Cave, Mimic Cave, and the tablet by Hera. Well, maybe not so much, I guess. Maybe I was maybe I was just thinking earlier you'd skip some of the ones that Bob had checked, and he went back and checked them later. So yeah. That's certainly a possibility. I think that would make sense. Like when I accidentally left the lunchbox behind on a warp, that was fun. Whoops. <laughs> like, did you do catfish and mushroom and all that? Uh, yeah, I don't remember when I did mushroom. Probably right after getting flute, and I batched catfish and with uh, pyramid and fairy. Oh, you have no idea how glad I was I didn't skip the basement of Hera. <laughs> I mean, maybe you do. But, whoa, that's a, that's a gamble some people would have made, and it would have been, like, super devastating. Yeah, that would have been a rough one. All right, so thank you guys for uh, commentating this and uh, everything else. I... I feel like a giant luck sack is what I feel like today. 
Well, sometimes it happens, you know. Sometimes you get a little bit lucky, or sometimes someone else gets a little bit unlucky, or sometimes you just get unlucky. And unfortunately, and for, fortunately, and unfortunately, that's the way that Randall works. It's, it's yeah. magic. Yep. But GG too, Bob. Like, yeah, it sucks that I ended up d- delving left side of Swamp Palace, but you still executed better than me. That left side check is not enough to add up for like the seven minute time difference. I mean, I just completely go moded swamp. Like it was my last thing. Yeah, but it's that was probably about three to four minutes of the difference. But that's not all of the difference. So you still outplayed me there too. So good job. Possibly. Uh, but yeah, thanks, thanks once again, and uh, see you on the other side. Yeah, thank you very much, commentators and our restreamer and our tracker. Indeed, thank you, thank you very, very much for uh, for the awesome race, guys. You both did very well, and I think we're going to be finishing up here in just a moment. So just make sure to follow the uh, make sure to follow our runners, uh, Doctor Bob Tassig and Emlyn, and make sure to follow our tracker, Magic Jade Forty Seven, and. My co-commentator, Game Guy 888. So, uh, I will leave the last word for you, my my friend. I mean, you're fair to uh, follow my uh, co-commentator here too. Ah, well, thanks. But uh, yeah, that'll be it for now. We've got another game going on here. In uh, actually, right now, uh, da- uh, I always forget how to pronounce his name. Dow TMB versus Lightyear is going on right now on Speed Gaming, so you can check that out. That race has just started minutes ago. And uh, we got some more random action tomorrow, starting at 10 a.m. on Speed Gaming, so keep uh, keep an eye out for that. Going to have a lot of it this week and this weekend, and it's next week. Uh, week 6 continues. So, for Game Guy, for Magic Jade, for both of our runners, and everyone here, uh, thank you very much for watching. Good night, good luck, good RNG. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.